episode of On the Couch. I'm Renee Waters. And I'm Laquan Burroughs. Today we are joined by Narina Cobb, the president of the Applied Behavior Analysis Club. Ooh, welcome, Narina. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for coming. We, we really appreciate it. So for those who may not know, what exactly does your club do? Like, What exactly is the Applied Behavioral Analysis Club? Well, the Applied Behavior Analysis Club is more based off of the concentration and the master's degree program that we offer here at Rowan University. Applied Behavior Analysis is the study of the contingencies surrounding behavior. It surrounds a lot of the ideologies that most of the behavior that we produce today is contingent or relies on the experience that we have throughout our whole lives. I mean, it works a lot with stimulus or pre-behavior yeah. or like consequences of behavior or reinforcements of behavior and how those variables or those aspects of behavior can increase or de decrease our behavior, whether we notice or not. Okay. okay. So what do you enjoy the most about being president of the club? I love talking with students. I love speaking with my e-board and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I love creating new events that relate to the studies of ABA. I mean, um, our last event involved um, a casino night, which involved a lot of intermittent reinforcement and how like intermittent reinforcement can be more sh like or a lot stronger to our behavior than, you know, continuous reinforcement mm -hmm. and how, you know, if we receive reinforcement like variable or variability and not, you know, every time we may be more eager to seek that reinforcement. And that's a lot of what surrounds casinos today. And that's a lot how we did our last event. A lot of people, the students came in and we talked about, you know, intermittent reinforcement mm -hmm. and how powerful it can be. I mean, if you're in a state like a casino and stuff like that and you feel like, oh, I, I lost this time, so I'm really going to try to win this time. <laughs> oh, wait, I lost this time, so I really must win this time. Mm -hmm. When in reality, it's all a fallacy. So That's different. Okay, yeah. Um, how did you find out about this club and what about it really struck you that you were like, I need to join this? Um, I was actually in my um, careers in psychology class and I found out about like what ABA was or what like you know applied behavior analysis is and it really did struck me like or really did strike me because I really love the contingencies around behavior and why we do the things that we do as humans or you know how we act the way we act mm -hmm. and um, I found out about the club as well and I reached out to Dr. Simmons and Dr. Raff and um, it's just taken off ever since. Okay. So what is something that you've learned or took away from being a part of the club? Oh my gosh, so much. I don't think I was able to manage my time as well before I became <laughs> president of ABA Club. Because um, I learned also more about listening to others as well. Mm -hmm. I feel as though we all think that we're really good listeners, but it takes a really, like, you know, it takes a lot of developing and a lot of skill and a lot of time to really learn how to listen to what somebody's saying and apply that to your practice and apply that to your education and apply that to your field. Because a lot of, that's what we do in applied behavior analysis. We listen mm -hmm. to people and we listen to you know, different people's experiences and we you know, apply how that might affect their future experiences. Okay, for those who might want to join, how often and where do you guys meet? Um, we aren't a club that meets too, too much. We're a club that's more event focused. Yeah. We love doing, you know, activities and different stuff like that. Last semester we had a scavenger hunt, which focused a lot on motivating operations and stuff like that. And then the casino night with intermittent. Um, through that we had two meetings. So we usually have meetings around once a month, around there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so do you guys have any programs coming up that you would like to share with everyone? Um, we do have our upcoming, upcoming meeting on mm -hmm. March 3rd. It's going to learn about um, environments and how different environments can influence, in different, uh, can influence us in different ways. And depending on our previous experiences, how these environments can affect us a lot differently. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have possibly a gaming night and stuff like that mm -hmm. where you can game and different stuff like that. Mario Brothers, mm -hmm. depending on maybe League of Legends. <laughs> and kind of feel how different environments, depending on like the loudness or the quietness of it, how it affects our performance in playing games. A lot of time we think of environments, we think of like learning and school, but it affects us everywhere. Mm. Okay, well, thank you again for talking about this. We really learned a lot and we really appreciate it. Mm. Speaking of games, we would like to know how accurate do you think BuzzFeed quizzes are and what is your <laughs> biggest fear? <laughs> Um, how accurate BuzzFeed quizzes are. If we're going to talk about like self-report quizzes, there are very like 
there's a lot of different like confounding variables or variables that can influence the quiz as well. Like how you're feeling that day, like, mm -hmm. you know, what you had to eat that day. Did you wake up late that day? Like did your significant other yell at you that day? Like, you know, that all affects how self-report quizzes come out. I mean, if we're gonna talk about personality quizzes and stuff like that, um, I believe the big five is the most valid and the most reliable. It was originally funded, um, founded by um, Paul Costa and Robert McRae. And it's we've been supported by most researchers today with how like, you know, five different factors of our personality can be shown through self-report quizzes. But when it comes to BuzzFeed quizzes and stuff, unless they have the big five and mm -hmm. research to support it, take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. And biggest fear? Um, That's hard. I mean, biggest the biggest fear, in, like you know, relates to like my field or biggest fear, like overall. Uh, I'd say overall. Overall, spiders. Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really well, don't like them. We're gonna see how accurate these quizzes are when we're gonna have you, our special guest, take one of these quizzes, and we'll see if it can guess your biggest fear and prove <laughs> you wrong. We'll be right back after this break. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. And even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. I have a mentor, Maria, and she convinced me to continue my education. She just never judges. She's a true role model. From the depths of my heart, I thank you, Maria, for being a friend and a beautiful person. No one receives a diploma alone. And I'm honored to share this moment with you. Thank you. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Great having you. Incredible women. I wish they had those kind of cool careers for women when we were growing up. Growing up. Thank you. So in this flashback, we're all the same age? Yeah. So, what does everyone want to be when they grow up? Yes. I want to make immersive video games. I oh, love the arcade. If I say two jobs, do I get extra credit? No. I want to revolutionize 3D printing. 3D? Like those classes we were in the movies. I want to analyze data from the cloud. I just want to get my hands unstuck. Oh. Yep. I want to be a meteor. You mean meteorologist. No. That's great, Al. Follow your dreams. For the record, I was a baby in the 70s. Welcome back to On the Couch. And we are still joined by Narina, and we are going to be doing a BuzzFeed feed quiz. So we're going to be asking you a few questions, and you have to answer them to the best of your ability, OK? You ready, Narina? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be All right. <laughs> for this. Let's get it. All right, so pick a random food out of these sermons. You know, the gummy worms, the fries, churros, or if you don't like any of these, just say no thanks. See, I was, <laughs> I just mentioned that I wanted Chick-fil-A. So true. like, I'm in the mood for like fried for food right now. So I, but I love gummy worms and I love churros. But like currently, too, currently fries. I'm in the mood for french fries. fries. Yeah, so we're gonna go french fries. Fries are nice. Fries, fries are nice. Right. I hate chocolate. <laughs> that's so weird. Nasty. I do not no, like If I had to I'm pick not. any, I would honestly, this might not be, people might not, might not support me for this, mm -hmm. but I uh -oh. love dark chocolate. Really? Now, dark chocolate for me, it's like, I don't really like it, but like, it, it depends on, on the bitterness. Like, if it's like a lower bitterness, I'm fine with it. Like, I think like the one I had <laughs> that I liked, it was like, 70 I like things that are covered in chocolate. Like that. I like, so. yeah, I like fruit that's like covered in chocolate fruit and chocolate stuff. Is, is cool. And I feel like dark chocolate covered fruit <laughs> is like. <laughs> she said, I don't like it at all. <laughs> so, so dark so chocolate? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to cook dark, dark chocolate? chocolate? Yeah. Dark chocolate? Ooh. Oh, oh they, they, Ooh. there you go. All <laughs> okay. right. Oh, now I could do this one. Now, are, are you more of a, a breakfast person? I don't really eat breakfast too I often, love to be honest. Toast. 
I'm gonna have to agree with you, and I'm gonna have to go toast? with French toast. All right, all right. It all right. is. French toast and French toast is pretty good. <laughs> all right, candies. We're just gummy talking about the gummy worms earlier. Gummy earlier. hearts. That's like. I don't feel like that's oh, common. Hearts I'm gonna go with gummy worms. Gummy there you worms? go. Good Why? choice. Yes. I'm gonna go with gummy worms because I don't know. I just feel like. They have like they come in like different forms. Like they have like the sour that's around them. Sour ones. And every time good. I see them, I always just think about the red and the blue ones. Mm. Oh, I, I know exactly. The red and blue they ones have, and the red white ones are pretty what good What is too. it like Triller gummy worms? That they yeah, have? yeah. Oh, those, those are, are actually so good. good, really good. And I like the sour like um, she, she's a, sour she's patch watermelon. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Cheese. I don't really eat cheese like that. Though. I love cheese. I mean, I, I, cheese. I like cheese, but I don't just eat plain cheese. I can cheese. eat cheese like a block of cheese like just I, to eat it. I could. I don't. I don't do it often though. Like <laughs> cheese and crackers though. That's a that's a good combo. <laughs> I like cheese, but like I've been trying to stay away from dairy because I've just been hearing so much stuff about dairy lately. But uh, I think I would definitely go with. I feel like cheddar's too strong for me. Hmm. Sometimes Not it the depends. What the? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You might have to, you might have to leave. We might have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to leave. <laughs> I'm gonna go with America. Oh, not, not American well, cheddar. Colby Jack is together, right? That's, that's I think so. cheddar. We're gonna go with Colby Jack, actually. Yeah. You're right. Let's, let's, let's be let's a little different there. Ooh, right? now fruits. Now fruits. Pine they, 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 they don't have the best option on your pineapple. I don't know. Pineapple is kind of hidden. I mean, this is hard. You like pineapple? pineapple? I, I do like pineapple. Pineapple's, Pineapple's pretty cool. They everything uh, uh, everything in this list, I would not choose. They, make, they can actually make your um, tongue burn. Don't they? Yeah, like, that's some what of I'm the, Doesn't yeah, like, do to some it, of the like, chemicals inside of it. Yes. That, like, that's why my tongue always feels bad afterwards. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they're, they're still good, though, even though they're trying to we eat. We have to focus on the options that are on the board. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Right>. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> bananas, I'm, um, a, I'm a big fan of bananas. Strawberries. Oh. Definitely strawberries. That's a great choice. Do you want to click it? I'm sorry. Let me stop hogging it. Ooh, now ice cream is pretty good. I, I, I do like me some ice cream. Ooh, um, Strawberry is always a very underrated choice. Very much so. Okay, very I underrated. I feel like it's an underrated choice too, but I'm gonna have to go with chocolate. <laughs> I'm not a big chocolate ice cream guy. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I don't I'm know like. chocolate unless it's like, like sometimes just too much. I don't like like the like I don't like all of the candy chocolate, but I like like the flavor chocolate in ice cream. But depends on hmm. which. It's always ice cream just too brand much for it me. is. Vegetables. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, Do you um, eat your vegetables? No. Hold up. First, <laughs> this question is kind of dumb because one, this is what I also mean by self-report oh, no. <laughs> things as well because they have broccoli, carrots, and salad. You cannot have a general term for salad with <laughs> like. This is That's also like. Things, this yeah. is also like reliability. Like. Like is this and also tomatoes validity. in there? Tomatoes like, or a fruit? Is this survey like actually measuring what it says it's going to be measuring? <laughs> no. We have to find out if they say what you're. What salad. Your is just pick salad, man. <laughs> look, just pick salad. Oh, they have the tomatoes in there. Tomatoes are fruits, and I was a this kid is a lot. Never ate my vegetables, and look at me now. <laughs> hey, that, yeah, exactly. Oh, like, hey, this we're, is we're right the fries. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. So my favorite type of fries are. Um, Surprise curly fries, Ooh. like when you get like when you order regular fries, mm -hmm. but they throw in like three Up curlies. 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 Yes. You know, one one type of fry I used to hate as a kid, but I, I kind of like now, like the potato wedges, like the like the waffle type fries. Those ones are so those good. Are, are, those are, 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 are really smacking out. As a kid, I always like they're I was like they look weird. Hell not. But like <sighs> I'm definitely have to go with curly. 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 Yeah, curly's the best. Curly. I was about to say, I could never get into really cheese fries either. Yeah, I yeah, have them every once in a while. As long as like they're on, if they're on the side and I can like choose, mm -hmm. that's good. All right, this is your last one before we find out. Uh, we got, so now you pretzels, were talking about get, your mom I didn't get all the heat, heat around pretzels. I ain't get all the hubba around pretzels. I remember when oh, I went trick or treating one time and this lady handed me pretzels and I don't think I've ever shot somebody a dirty <laughs> look in my whole life like that. I was gonna sock once for Halloween and I did the same look. But we, no. do, we, we, we digress. I'm going to go with chips because chips, I feel like it'd be very generic. It could be a bunch of different yeah, you stuff. Could, now, you I would have pick to a go with things. popcorn only popcorn because is good. Y have, have y'all ever had movie popcorn? Yes. Now that's the best. Yeah, that I love is movie true. popcorn. Pop, that type of popcorn and then uh, what, what's it called? Uh, kettle corn. Have y'all ever had movie popcorn? <laughs> movie popcorn but All right, let's see. Good. You, are, you are afraid of people, apparently. Fear, fear, read the description. Fear of people. You're, a, you're, you're afraid of people. Right? You're super introverted. Just came straight at me. Like, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just reading what the, what the thing said. That, that you're ain't super me. introverted. You yes. have friends, but you're very shy. Don't like being called out on or singled out. Mm -hmm. You're very, 
Um, that is actually very false. You can ask oh. Hillary, the girl who brought me on this show, too. Oh. Um, Call it out, Busby. Buzz, <laughs> dude, Busby's lying. Constantly, constantly. In any of my classes that I'm in, if you know any people see this and you're in a class with me, you guys already know I don't stop talking. All three of us were talking before this. <laughs> okay. I don't mean to, but it's like, you know, my mind is always moving and my mouth has to match. Well, <laughs> so I don't it's know. Like, According to BuzzFeed, you're not afraid of spiders. You're, so it must you're be true, yeah. honestly. You know, the BuzzFeed quizzes are always lie. right. Buzzfeed, the BuzzFeed quizzes don't lie. <laughs> they don't lie? <laughs> she, she, she about to cancel, y'all. She about to take y'all down. No, this is oh, ridiculous. No. Pick up the slack in the game. OK, thank you so much, Narina. That yes, was you. fun. So viewers, don't go anywhere, because after this, Laquan and I are going to dive into some juicy hot topics. So yes, stay yes, tuned. We are. I'm a first-generation Filipino-American. You don't always feel you're a part of the country you live in. It's this weird middle space sometimes that you have to, to live inside of. But when you meet others that are also living in that space, you'll learn to know that that is its own unique space, too. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At four in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. He asked all his therapists to help him undertake some of the house chores. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. Yo, camping buddy. Boom. Okay, you guys ready? Dude, I thought you were driving. I thought you were driving. Oh, I never said I was driving. I, I definitely can't drive. <laughs> If you're high, just don't drive. It's illegal everywhere. If you feel different, you drive different. Welcome back to On the Couch. This part of the show is called Hot Topics, and we are going to be talking about what's hot and what's not in pop culture. Okay, Laquan, so even though we know Kanye is going through his love conspiracy with Kim Kardashian, Aww. recently he dropped a surprise Netflix documentary called Genius a Kanye tri triology trailing through his path to fame. So it lingers through the complications of Wes's life from embracing Donald Trump to his bizarre 2020 presidential run to saying that the oppression that blacks have experienced given its century long duration sounds like a choice. And fans are actually seeming to enjoy this different side of Kanye. So what do you think about this documentary? So Kanye, we were just talking about him earlier really too. <laughs> I mean, I am <clears throat> like some of the stuff he's been saying. He's mm -hmm. been going a little crazy. But I feel like this documentary might actually be kind of interesting because we get to see that different side of him, to see mm -hmm. like what kind of makes him tick. And we might get to see that vulnerable side of him of him kind of having those mental issues mm -hmm. that we have been kind of talking about. So mm -hmm. I feel like he's going to say some out-of-pocket stuff mm -hmm. a little bit, but like it might be interesting to see him in this light and see what was going on through him like during this whole time, especially yeah. during that presidential election stuff, because at first mm -hmm. I thought that was a joke, and then mm -hmm. it became really serious mm -hmm. at one point. So Yes, going based mm -hmm. off of what Narina was teaching us earlier is exactly. that he may actually have something more called, well, more meaning mental disorder. We mm -hmm. know that he has bipolar, bipolar disorder, but it just seems like a little bit exaggerated. Yeah, there's with the, the whole the, point with the whole posters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So. There's that definitely going something on. Cause she was mm -hmm. talking to us about like the different types of things. Like you can even see it in his posts, like mm -hmm. how things like just rapid, rapid, rapid. Like you don't, there's mm -hmm. no breaks. So there might definitely be something there. <clears throat> yeah. But so you know, <laughs> Black History Month is continuing on, and 
we were introduced to a, a new show that was a nice take on a, a beloved old series. And of course, mm -hmm. I'm talking about Bel Air. So, for those who might not know, Bel Air is a spin-off series produced by Will Smith that's like a modern take on uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you know, kind of giving us a little bit of a different feel. And it stays true to what the old show kind of gave us, but with a new twist and new kind of plot lines and new differences. So, I have my feelings about reboots. I want to kind of see how you feel about this. Have you watched it? Have you seen anything? Or do you even plan to watch it? <laughs> that face tells me probably not. <laughs> Look, I've seen it, a part of it. Uh -oh. <laughs> but like I was discussing with somebody else, a lot of people are going to hate me for this. I do not like it. Ooh. Only reason why I do not like it is because I feel like he could have did better. It's never going to be the like the, the original. original version. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't like how... They tried to play my man Carlton out as I a drug hear, addict. I, I, I did hear that they, <laughs> that they really that they really changed kids up. And some people like it, some people don't. No. My main thing, I'm not a big fan of reboots. I think just leave it alone. Yeah. But from it's what I hear, for a yeah, I hear, I've been hearing mixed things about it. Part of me wants to check it out just to see what it's like, but another mm. part of me is afraid to check it out because of how much I loved the original, I have this I have this really weird thing about reboots, just make something new. But yeah. I have more faith in it since it is produced by Will Smith and he was a big part of mm -hmm. that series. So I feel like he would know, to, uh, hopefully, to stay true to what everything is. So, but from what you're saying, you're, no, you're, you're not liking it. You're not liking it. <laughs> no for me, okay? So what was probably mm. one of your favorite episodes from the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Ah, oh, that is... <laughs> That is difficult. Um, it might be the pool episode, the one where they were playing pool and they were just trying to be taught up about it. But so uh, I'd say that one. That one. Yeah. Okay. I like that. There was actually a scene with Will Smith that him and it it wasn't acting. I think he kind of like gypped the script like right there, right then and there mm -hmm. on the set, and it was actually really emotional. So I probably have to say that episode was the most. I think I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the most inspirational episode to me, but. All right, y'all, that's all we have for today. So I'm Renee Waters. And I'm Laquan. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on On the Couch.